بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد سرزاق الله خير بدو السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> We completed uh, the chapter العلم به أو uh, or knowledge and we talked about knowledge what types are wajib what types are a communal obligation what types are obligated upon every muslim we went through that in the last lessons in the previous lessons and then we reached um uh, the sub chapter qawluhu al amalu bihi and the speech acting by it or acting with it so meaning acting with the knowledge that you've learned so acting upon the knowledge that you've learned and as you can see on the screen here mark in number 8 in arabic so we'll start from there inshallah so the sheikh says qawluhu al amalu bihi ay bil ilmi li annahu la yakfi an al insana yu'allimu wa yata'allamu bal la budda an ya'mala bi ilmihi fal ilmu biduni amalin inma huwa hujjatan inma huwa hujjatun ala al insan fal la yakunu al ilm nafi'an illa bil amal أما من علم ولم يعمل فهذا مغضوب عليه لأنه عرف الحق وتركه على بصيرة. So the Sheikh says that um, acting upon the knowledge, so acting by, and he says, i.e., acting upon that uh, upon the knowledge that you've learned uh, that you've gained, because he says it's not sufficient that a person teaches and learns. Only rather, it's incumbent or it's a must that he acts upon that knowledge that is gained. So he says, um, so knowledge without action. In fact, he says having so having knowledge of something and not acting upon it is an evidence against you. It's a proof against you because you didn't act upon it. So the Sheikh says, so knowledge without action. Is not beneficial, and so therefore, knowledge, once it's acted upon, when you act upon that knowledge you have, then it's beneficial. If you just hold that knowledge and do nothing with it, it's not benef- It's not a benefit. So then he says, as for the one who learns and knows and doesn't act upon that knowledge, then he earns. Allah's anger, angers upon him, because he knew the truth, because he he was aware he was aware of the truth and knew the truth, but he left it. He left it when he was upon a clear path and clear vision of what the truth was. He left it, and then the Sheikh says, "Wanadimu yakul, wanadimu yakul, بعلمه لم يعمل معذب من قبل عباد الوثن. so that's a, um, a line of poetry meaning that the one who's alim, the one who's knowledgeable about something with his knowledge of course doesn't who doesn't act upon it. so whoever doesn't act upon the knowledge that they have, they are punished. they'll be punished before the people of shirk basically عباد الوثن. So the people of shirk, the ones who worshipped idols and worshipped other than Allah. So the person who's knowledgeable, for example, who's knowledgeable of Islam, didn't act upon it. He's going to be punished before them. He's going to be the first one to be punished. So you can see uh, the gravity of the issue here. Act upon, acting upon knowledge. Then the shaykh continues and he says, he continues and he says, وَهَذَا مَذْكُورٌ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الشَّرِيفِ إِنَّ مِنْ أَوْلِ مَنْ 
So this is from a hadith as you can see here Akhrajahu Tirmidhi Wa huwa hadith Taweer So there's a reference here from At-Tirmidhi Okay And also there's a reference here You can refer to it With the reference number of the hadith However it's a well known hadith And and we look at what the Shaykh says here about it So if you look at the hadith and go back to it The Prophet Sallallahu said The first person to be uh, touched with the fire or burnt by the fire would be the person who was an alim, who was a scholar, uh, who didn't act upon the knowledge or one who, who has knowledge doesn't act upon it. So then the shaykh continues and he says, Al-ilmu makroonun bil-amali wal-amalu huwa, tham, uh, huwa thamratu al-ilm fa-ilmun bila-amalin or fa-ilmun bila-amal ka-shajratin bila-thamar la faidata fiha وَالْإِلْمُ إِنَّمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ أَجْلِ الْعَمَلِ So then the shaykh, he says, he says, so knowledge, so knowledge is connected with action or acting upon it. That's the whole point of knowledge. You have knowledge to act upon it and it's connected. So he, so he says, he says, so acting, so, so acting upon, so acting upon that knowledge is the fruit of having that knowledge. That's the fruits of knowledge, acting upon it. So he says, so having knowledge and not acting upon it is like a tree, for example, it's like a tree that bears no fruit. It has no benefit. And he says that uh, knowledge as uh, was sent, knowledge descended upon us and was sent to us. Why? In order for us to act upon. For example, the Quran was revealed or sent down from uh, from the heavens, sent down from Allah to us in order to act upon it, not just read it. As another example. So let's carry on, inshallah. <clears throat> then the Shaykh continues and he says, Kama anna al-amala biduni ilmin yakunu wa balan wa dalalan ala sahibihi. Ida kan al-insanu ya'malu biduni ilmin fa inna amalahu wa bal wa ta'ab ala sahibihi. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد. so the sheikh continues and says he goes and 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 so and likewise or as for knowledge or sorry action so acting without knowledge brings about brings about corrupt actions so so yeah, sorry. Let's go back to this. So as the Sheikh says, "Kama anna amal bidun ilm." So acting, acting without knowledge, or acting, or carrying out an action or a deed without knowledge, just like that causes corruption in that action because it's not based on knowledge and it causes you to go astray. Then he he mentions that. So so we're looking at from both angles here. So you can have knowledge and act upon it. You can also. Uh, do a deed without knowledge which would then cause corruption of that action because you're not doing it uh, upon the way it should be done you know with, with the knowledge that you need so the shaykh continues and he says so he says so he repeats that again he says that basically if you act uh, upon a deed or act out or carry out an action without um uh without knowledge then it becomes corrupted on whoever's carrying it out without knowledge and then he mentions the hadith uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is well known as well. And the reference is number two at the bottom. You can see at the bottom of that page uh, from uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, um, uh, which we mentioned: "Man amila amalan leisa alayhi amru nafawarad," meaning that whoever acts upon or carries out a deed or an action um, that it's not that's not been mentioned in the Quran or the prophetic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? Or, uh, uh, from the Sahaba in this way from the deen of Allah then it's, it's rejected it's rejected like that <clears throat> and the Shaykh continues and he says وَلِهَذَا نَقْرَأُوا فِي الْفَاتِحَةِ فِي كُلِّ رَكْعَةٍ إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِينَ صِرَاطِ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّالِينَ so if we go back to the translation of that, and let's just refer back to a uh, translation of that, of those as we all know them, but let's just do it for the sake of the lesson. So the first ayah, verse 6 from Surah Al-Fatiha, I mentioned here, guide us to the straight way. 
Then verse 7, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not the way of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. And the scholars mentioned this as well in uh, in, in, in other books and in other lessons. Um, they mentioned that uh, the people who went astray uh, are an example of the Christians. They act without knowledge. And the ones who earned Allah's anger are the Jews because they knew the truth when it was revealed to them at that time, but they turned away and rejected it. So uh, that's uh, an extra benefit, inshallah, for us to take from the lesson. So the Sheikh says, فَسَمَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ يَأْمَلُونَ بِدُونِ يِلْمٍ الظَّالِينَ وَالَّذِينَ يَأْلَمُونَ وَلَا يَأْمَلُونَ بِالْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ فَالنَّتَنَبَّهْ لِذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ مُهِمْ جِدًّا So the Shaykh says, let's just go back there. So he says that Allah named those that um, act without knowledge astray. So the ones who act without knowledge are the ones who are astray. And those who uh, act, uh, 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 sorry, and those who have knowledge, who had the knowledge and don't act upon it, they are the ones who earn Allah's anger. They are the ones who Allah is angry with. They earn Allah's anger. So the Sheikh says, so therefore we must um, pay particular attention to this point or to these points because they're very, very important. So then we move on to the next subchapter or the third point. Asalifatu, the third point. Adawatu ilayhi. Adawatu ilayhi. Or adawatu ilal ilm. So calling to that knowledge. So now you've learned that knowledge. You've understood that knowledge. You've acted upon that knowledge yourself. You're, 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 you're a living example of the knowledge you've learned. And then the next, the third step is we call to that knowledge. So we call other people to that knowledge. So people who won't be aware, who may not be aware, we, we then pass on that knowledge and teach them to bring them to the truth as well or to call them and to make them aware of uh, their deen. So the Shaykh continues says, قَوْلُهُ أَدَعْوَةُ إِلَيْهِ أَيْ لَا يَكْفِي أَنْ يَتَعَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ وَيَعْمَلْ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَلَا يَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ بَلْ لَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَدْعُوا غَيْرَهُ فَيَكُونُ نَافِيًا لِنَفْسِهِ وَنَافِيًا لِغَيْرِهِ وَلِأَنَّ هَذَا الْإِلْمَا أَمَانَةٌ لَيْسَ بِمُلْكٍ لَكَ تَخْتَزِنُهُ وَتُحَرِّمُ النَّاسَ مِنْهُ وَالنَّاسُ بِحَاجَةٍ إِلَيْهِ فَالْوَاجِبُ عَلَيْكَ التَّبْلِيغِ وَالْبَيَانِ وَدَعْوَةُ النَّاسِ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ هَذَا الْإِلْمُ الَّذِي حَمَّلَكَ اللَّهُ إِيَّا وَقْفًا عَلَيْكَ وَإِنَّمَا هُوَ لَكَ وَلِغَيْرِكَ فَلَا تَحْتَكِرُهُ عَلَى نَفْسِكَ وَتَمْنَعُ النَّاسَ مِنَ الْإِنْتِفَاعِ بِهِ بَلْ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ تَبْلِيغِهِ وَلَا بُدَّ مِنْ بَيَانِهِ لِلنَّاسِ فَلَا قَالَ تَعَالَى وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ لَتُبَيِّنُنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَكْتُمُونَ Ali Imran verse 187, the ayah there at the end of the, of, the, of the paragraph. So let's look at what the Shaykh has uh, explained to us here. Uh, we'll translate this paragraph. So the Shaykh says, says so calling towards that knowledge, so calling, calling others to that knowledge that you've learned. And we're talking about Islamic knowledge here. So um, the Shaykh says, it does, it's not sufficient that you know, a person learns, you know, the uh, uh, Islamic religion or, you know, the, uh, it takes Islamic knowledge, learns it, then acts upon it for himself only. And, and that he doesn't call anybody else, that is not sufficient. And he doesn't call people to Allah, Azza wa Jal. Rather, it's incumbent that um, uh, he calls other people to it as well. So therefore, it's being beneficial. Uh, so it's being beneficial for himself and it's being beneficial to others as well. So he's benefiting himself, but he's benefiting his brothers as well. Uh, and it says, well, uh, the Sheikh Kutina says, because knowledge is a trust. Knowledge is a trust. It's not something that you own. So for example, you learn something or I've learned something. I don't own it. Islamically speaking, talking about Allah's religion. 
and uh, Islamic knowledge, it's a trust upon us. So therefore, um, it's not for us to just, you know, uh, lock you up in a cupboard somewhere or inside us and not tell anybody else about it and just keep it for ourselves and make it forbidden upon other people. No, that's not the purpose of knowledge. And the purpose, actually, uh, the actual purpose is to call others to it as well. Especially when people are in dire need of this knowledge and guidance. So it's obligatory upon you or us uh, to convey and to clarify the message and call people to it and call people to all that which is good. Al-khair, it's khair for them. It's good for them. It's goodness for them. So this knowledge uh, that Allah has given us and entrusted upon us that we've learned, Allah has taught us this knowledge, then we must not just stop, you know, stop it there with just ourselves and not teach it to anybody else. It's not upon us to just stop it there. We can't put a body in place, just stop it there. Rather, it's for it's for it's for us and it's for others. So the Sheikh says it's for you and it's for others as well. So don't monopolize uh, that knowledge. Don't just keep it for yourself and uh, prevent other people from benefiting from that knowledge that you have. Rather, it's upon you to convey the message and clarify it to the people. That Allah said in the Quran, the ayah that we just read from Surah Ali Imran, and if you go to the translation. If you have a look at the translation of that particular ayah, verse 187, we'll read the whole ayah. And remember, when Allah took a covenant from those who were given the scripture, Jews and Christians, to make it the news of the coming of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the religious knowledge known and clear to mankind and not to hide it, but they threw it away behind their backs and purchased with it some miserable gain and indeed worst is that which they bought. So that's quite clear to us there as well. That's clear from the Quran for us to understand that. <clears throat> and that's an example of how the Jews and Christians uh, hid the message or tried to hide the you know, message that within their own scripture that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will come and will be the final Prophet and will come. Uh, so, you know, that's a clear example for us. And so, you know, that's clear what the Shaykh also said. Let's continue. So the Shaykh says, this is so the Sheikh says this is a uh, it's a contract it's an agreement and it's a, uh, it's a contract between um that that Allah took with us it's an, you know upon the ulama upon those who know upon knowledge it's it's a it's an agreement it's a covenant that's probably a better word to use that we clarify to the people or that they clarify, the ulama clarify, the scholars clarify what Allah taught them in order that they uh, distribute and spread al-khair, you know, all that which is good. Uh, and that they take the people out of darkness and they bring them into light, the light of knowledge, the light of guidance. The way of the Prophet wasallam and his companions, radiallahu anhum. And then the Shaykh continues and he says, and this is, uh, and this was what the the, uh, the messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, did. This is what they did as well. This is what they did, and whoever followed them. And then uh, we, we mentioned the ayah from Surah Surah to Yusuf, verse one hundred eight. And if we go to Surah to Yusuf, verse one hundred eight, we'll read all that as well. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is my way. I invite unto Allah, i.e. to the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, with sure knowledge. I and whosoever follows me also must invite others to Allah, i.e. to the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, with sure knowledge and glorified and exalted be Allah above all that they associate as partners with him. And I am not of the mushrikeen, the polytheists, the pagans, idolaters and disbelievers in the oneness of Allah. Those who worship others along with Allah or set up rivals or partners to Allah. So that's clear there. You know, that's a command for us as well. A command to carry out. 
So the Shaykh continues and he says, هذه طريقة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وطريقة أتباعه العلم والعمل والدعوة إلى الله عز وجل فمن فمن لم يدعو وهو قادر على الدعوة وعنده علم وكتمه فإنه يلجم بلجام من نار يوم القيامة كما في الحديث. So we just go a bit down. We can see the reference to the hadith there. أخرج أبو داود وترمذي وابن ماجة ومن حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه. So there's references here. You can look them up in your spare time. <clears throat> so the Sheikh says, so he says, this is the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and it's the way of his followers that, you know, uh, having knowledge, so knowledge, acting upon that knowledge, calling others to that, uh, calling others to Allah. So whoever calls to, uh, you know, with that knowledge that they have of the deen, they're calling to Allah, of course, they're calling people to Allah, they're calling them to their Lord, Azawajal. So then the Sheikh says, so whoever doesn't call people to Allah, who doesn't, you know, call people actively, you know, to, to Allah and doesn't spread the message, and he is able to do so, he is capable, and he has knowledge, and then he hides it. Indeed, this person, this person will uh, be strapped, uh, like um, an example will give, he'll be strapped, um, you know, like on a horse, you know, the, uh, the horse wears on his face, um, to help, you know, with the uh, with the straps that the horse has on his face, and then you know the two straps go further back, so you, you can control it. But those straps on the face, it'll be strapped like that on your body with fire on the Yom Al Qiyamah. That's the punishment of the person who has knowledge, who's capable of it, who's actually probably who's capable of it, and has knowledge but doesn't, and he hides it. He hides it. He doesn't spread it. He doesn't tell other people about it. That's the punishment on the day of judgment. More them, and then here's the references at the bottom, as you can see. Have a look at that, inshallah. Um, and you can have a look at that in more detail yourselves. So the Shaykh continues and he says, Qawluhu as-sabr ala al-adha fih. So now we want to the fourth point, and it's about sabr. So sabr ala adha fi. So the Shaykh continues and says, so, so that, just before we get into that, as-sabr ala, uh, ala al-adha fi means having patience upon any harm that comes your way, any harm that comes your way, any type of harm that comes your way, you have to be patient upon it. So the Shaykh continues and he says, مَعْلُومٌ أَنَّ مَنْ دَعَ النَّاسَ وَأَمَرَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَى عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ فَإِنَّهُ سيتعرض سَيَتَعَرَّضُ لِلْأَذَى مِنَ الْأَشْرَارِ لِأَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ لَا يُرِيدُونَ الْخَيْرَ بَلْ يُرِيدُونَ شَحَوَاتِ وَالْمُحَرَّمَاتِ والأهواء الباطلة فَإِذَا جَاءَ مَنْ يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَرُدُّهُمْ عَنْ شَهَوَاتِهِمْ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَكُونَ مِنْهُمْ رَدُّ فِعْلٍ بالقول بِالْقَوْلِ أَوْ بِالْفِعْلِ فَالْوَاجِبُ أَلَى مَنْ يَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيُرِيدُوا وَجْهَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَصْبِرَ عَلَى الْأَذَى وَأَنْ يَصْبِرَ عَلَى الْأَذَى وَأَنْ يَسْتَمِرَ فِي الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وقدوته في ذلك الرسل عليه الصلاة والسلام عليه الصلاة والسلام وخيرهم خاتمهم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. So the Sheikh says in this paragraph we start the the uh, fourth point regarding being patient. Um, and the Sheikh says it's well known, it's known that whoever calls p- uh, people, whoever calls the people to Islam, and whoever calls uh, people um, uh, in that regard and commands them with uh, all that which is good, and uh, forbids them uh, from all that which is evil, then indeed, you know, he's going to encounter and come upon um, uh, harm from uh, the evil ones. And, and the Sheikh explains what does he mean by that. He says, because he says uh, 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 most people, a lot of people, a lot of people, they don't really want, they don't desire or want goodness, they, they 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 want to follow their desires, and they want to follow all that which is forbidden. They want to follow the desires um, uh, that are false, of course. They just want to follow their desires and sin and all the rest of it. That's how most of the people actually are. So the Sheikh says, so if 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 uh, so if uh, if a person is calling to Allah, you know, or whoever that particular person is calling to Allah, then 
uh, it's upon him uh, to obviously, uh, and, and uh, the person who's calling to Allah and then tells those people, you know, that these are wrong, you know, you're following the desires, this is sin, you know, clarifies uh, that to them. Then whoever is doing these actions of goodness, of course, calling, you know, clarifying people what's wrong, clarifying to people what's right, calling people to Allah, taking them out of darkness, calling them to light, as in the guidance from the Quran, the Sunnah, and the, and the Deen of Allah, in accordance with the prophetic tradition of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, and in, uh, by the understanding or under the spect- uh, spectacle of uh, the Sahaba, عنهم, then then upon them is to expect this. They're going, you know, uh, you know, uh, they're going to face these kinds of harms, and so it's obligatory upon them that they call to Allah, uh, uh, that they call to Allah, and they be patient upon any harm that comes their way, and that they continue in the path of calling to Allah, uh, and they follow the way of the messengers of Allah, uh, والسلام, and the best of them, and the final messenger. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Sheikh continues, and he, and he says to us, he says, "Mada lakiya min al nas, or mada lakiya min al nas, wa kam lakiya min al adha bil qawli wal fi'li." So just to get this out of the way here, um, we look at the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in 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 his time. You know when the Prophet, uh, when Allah sent him on the mission of calling the people to tawhid al Islam. And uh, the Mushrikeen, what they did to him, you know, and the, uh, the examples will follow. Uh, the Sheikh will give us a few examples, but we have a look at the prime example for us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look how much, how many hardships he went through and how many hardships the companions went through. And some of them, and a lot of them died as well, you know, to get this message to us here. So we have to look back at what happened in the beginning. People sacrificed their lives. And that's why, Alhamdulillah, by the fadl of Allah, of course, first and foremost, and then... Um, uh, the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba that we have, you know, we've been able to be guided to Islam. So uh, then the Shaykh continues and he says, "Qalu sahirun wa kathabun wa qalu majnunun wa qalu fihi min al aqwal allati zakrha Allah azza wa jal fi al Quran wa tanawluhu bil ada kadafuhu bil hijara hatta adamu aqiba aqiba." صلى الله عليه وسلم لما دعاهم إلى الله عز وجل وألقوا سلا جزور على ظهره وهو ساجد عنه الكعبة فتوعدوه بالقتل وهددوه وفي غزوة أحد جرى عليه وعلى أصحابه ما جرى عليه الصلاة والسلام كسروا ربعيته وشجوه في وشجوه في رأسه Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Waqa'a fi hufratin wa huwa nabiyullah Kullu hadha adha fi da'wati ila Allah azza wa jal Lakinahu sabara wa tahammala wa huwa afdal al-khalq Alayhi salatu wa salam Falabuda lilladhi yakumu bihadi da'wa An yata'arrada lil An yata'arrada lil adha Ala hasab Ala hasabi imanihi wa da'watihi Wa da'watahu Afwad على حسابه على حسب إيمانه ودعوته ولكن عليه أن يصبر ما دام أنه على حق فإنه يصبر ويتحمل فهو في سبيل الله وما يناله من الأذى فهو في كفة حسناته أجر من الله سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh says, and just going back to we look at some of the examples of how the Prophet, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was harmed, and so some of the examples here is that uh, v- uh, the verbal harm. So people, uh, so the mushrikun, uh, uh, the mushrikun of that time, the polities of that time, they harmed him. They harmed him verbally. So the examples of the verbal types of harm were calling him a magician, you know, a magician, a soothsayer, uh, you know, all that sort of thing, uh, calling him a liar. Uh, they called him a crazy man. They said all these things, you know, to try to uh, distort the message and to make out that he's just a liar or he's crazy or he's a magician. Uh, and these are from uh, some of the, uh, the the things that people had said. And this is mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ had to bear this, you know, but he carried on and he was patient. Uh, and, and from the physical types of harm, what were they? 
some of the examples here, as we're all uh, aware of, we will remind ourselves again, inshallah, that he was pelted with stones up until he bled, his ankles bled. They pelted with stones up until his ankles bled. And his feet was, you know, uh, bleeding, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When uh, the Prophet sallallahu was calling uh, the mushrikun to, uh, to the deen of Allah. Also, uh, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was um, prostrating uh, and praying to Allah uh, by the Kaaba, uh, um, when he was thrown on his back, um, um, people say intestines, but um, I think it's more accurate to say that, uh, you know, when uh, a camel gives birth, a female camel gives birth, to what's uh, born, so uh, a young camel, then the placenta and the dirt that comes after the najasa, the, the impurities that come after when the uh, camel comes out, that dirt and all that, that's what was thrown on his back. So it's impure, impure, all these dirty impurities, you could imagine probably smelly as well, you know, it's quite bad, it's really bad, in fact. And that was thrown on his back while he was praying. So all these physical types of harm, you know, uh, that, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to encounter. So, you know, we can look back at that and hopefully that, that gives us uh, incentive and gives us, uh, you know, confidence in calling to Allah and being patient upon that and we're following the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Shaykh mentions as well that whoever calls to Allah, then, you know, um, then of course, accord, according to his level of Iman, he's going to face these trials. And this is a test. So it's important to be patient. And the Sheikh also mentions another example of physical harm um, that happened in one of the Ghazwas uh, is that where the Prophet ﷺ was struck in his head um, by the Mushrikun and also um, one of his tooth were broken. They were broken. One of his uh, teeth were broken, sorry, as well. So he, he does physical pain and harm um, and was uh, also fell into a ditch um, as well or into a hole. And he and, and the, the Sheikh says, and he is the Prophet of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He says all of this harm In calling the people to Allah Azza wa Jal However But He was patient And, and he, he He bared all that That was that came to him He was patient upon it And he And he was He did all that And he bared all that Harm and everything And, and, and you know And he is the best of creation He is the best of creation Best of mankind The best of creation As salatu wa salam so therefore, the Sheikh says, whoever calls to Allah, then it's upon him that he should expect the harms will come his way and he's patient upon it. Just how the Prophet ﷺ was and the Sahaba were and whoever followed them. Um, so the Sheikh uh, finishes there. And so he reminds us as well that when we're patient upon this, we're calling people to Allah's deen, then we need to remember that every time we're patient and we keep that patience and we continue and strive in the way of Allah, we're striving in the way of Allah, then um, uh, our skills... Uh, of good deeds are being filled. We got to remember that and remind ourselves our scales of good deeds are being filled. So it's a reward. And the Shaykh says, what the Lilu Kolu Ta'ala. So then he continues, the Shaykh says, um, he mentions Surah Al Asr, but we'll get to that in a second. So the Shaykh says, Hadil Masail al Larba, Yajibu and Tatalamaha, Bil Tafseel, Hal Min Dalil in Allah Makal Hu Sheikh, in Hadil Masail al Arba. يجب علينا تعلمها أو يجب علينا آه علينا تعلمها وهو وعدنا أنه لا يقول شيئا إلا بدليل فأين الدليل؟ So the Sheikh then moves on and he says so these are the four uh, affairs that we've discussed now uh, uh, knowledge acting upon knowledge calling other people uh, calling other people to that knowledge that you've learned um, and Fourthly and lastly, here in in uh, in, in this topic that we're discussing, um, uh, being uh, patient upon any harms, any harms, being patient upon any harms that you face, and continuing in the path of Allah, don't be deterred. Um, so then the uh, Sheikh says um, that you, we need to learn these in detail. We need to learn these. It's upon us to learn all of these in actual uh, in detail. We need to know the facts, the full detail of these four affairs. And we also mentioned earlier on where the Sheikh said that this original author of this book, uh, Sheikh Al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, um, doesn't mention anything except with Dalil, meaning mentioning ayat from the Quran and mentioning uh, 
uh, a hadith from the uh, narrated and on the authentic, uh, authenticity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Quran and Sunnah. So, so we're asking the question, or the Shaykh's asking the question, okay, so we mentioned that, but where is the dalil? So where is the evidence? So the Shaykh says, قَالَ الدَّلِيلُ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَىٰ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هذه هي المسألة الأولى على العلم لأن الإيمان لا يكون إلا بعلم وهو معرفة وهو معرفة الله عز وجل ومعرفة نبيه ومعرفة دين الإسلام بالأدلة <clears throat> we'll just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says, that, what's the evidence? And the evidence is what the original author has mentioned here. Suratul Asr. Uh, Surat and if we, uh, we, we, we all know this surah, and we all know the meaning. However, just to remind ourselves, we will go back to the translation and have a look ourselves again. So, so the translation is by... By the time or by time, verily, man is in loss, except those who believe in Islamic monotheism, i.e. Tawheed, and do righteous good deeds, and recommend one another to the truth, i.e. order one another to perform all kinds of good deeds, al-ma'roof, which Allah has ordained, and abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds, al-munkar, which Allah has forbidden, and recommended one another to patience for the sufferings, harms and injuries which one may encounter in Allah's cause during preaching his religion of Islamic monotheism or jihad etc. So there's our answer and we, you know, we clearly look at that and that's very very clear to us that all of those four points are within this surah from the Quran. So the Shaykh goes on and he says so um, he mentions he says so the first affair that we mentioned which was knowledge he said he says because Iman you can't have Iman except without knowledge and that and what is that knowledge? That knowledge is having knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, having knowledge of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his messenger and prophet, and being having knowledge of the deen of Islam with evidences. With evidence. What about the second affair? Action. Where's the evidence in the, in this surah about that? Well, the Shaykh says, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and so we, we go back to the translation and they act, uh, they carry out good deeds, carry out good righteous deeds. And that is acting upon knowledge, isn't it? Because you're acting upon the knowledge you've learned and you're acting upon and carrying out those good deeds. What about the third affair, um, uh, which was calling to Allah, right? Calling to the deen of Allah. What our soul will haqqi for the da'wah to so the Shaykh says, and you know, entrusting and, and um, um, uh, advising each other and, you know, reminding each other uh, um, uh, with the truth, you know, all that which is good to carry out and all that which is evil to stay away from it. That is uh, calling people to knowledge and action. I, the deen of Allah, isn't it? Calling to knowledge and action. Uh, and I just want to mention an extra benefit here, which I learned elsewhere. I want to share it with yourselves, with you brothers, is that um, this uh, particular ayah here, and the last ayah, وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ or Suratul Asr, that the Sahaba, whenever they used to leave each other's company, they always used to read this surah. Why? Because it, because it holds huge benefit. You can see, we can see it for ourselves now. It, it, it holds a massive benefit for us. The advice in there and the commands in there, uh, if we follow them, we will be successful. So they used to remind each other. So, you know, that's something that we can carry out as well and follow in that way. Then the fourth and final uh, point that we mentioned, that affair was uh, to be patient upon any harm. Why? What are our so be sabr? So advise each other with what? And recommend for each other and advise each other with patience upon any harm that might come in in, in, in treading Allah's path in, in calling to Allah you know in, in, in calling people to Allah uh, uh, you know to the deen of Allah so then what we will do inshallah as the lesson has gone on we will stop here and we'll continue from uh, I think we'll just continue from this as a reminder 
we'll continue from the start of this paragraph here, inshallah, and um, we'll continue from next week, same time, Friday, inshallah, at 8 o'clock, and um, we will continue from where we left off from Surah Al-Asr, we'll finish this uh, explanation from the Sheikh, and then we'll carry on, because there's a lot more to come here, which I think um, uh, would be better in a new lesson, so we're all fresh again, inshallah, we can take it on properly. And understand it. So inshallah khair. I'll see you brothers uh, next week. Um Subhanakullahu wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.